Hi everyone, my name is Duri. I work as business and project manager at the company. Our company is specialized uh, in developing on different IoT solutions, mostly uh, the development of things. And I would like to tell you about non-engineering part of our work, about business analysis. Uh, just to remind one about what is it, business analysis the practice of enabling change in an organizational context by defining needs and recommending solutions that deliver value to stakeholders. The, the definition according to BA book is the main book for many of business analysts. Um, I think that you know the definition of the IoT uh, and uh, we can move forward and to speak about the role of business analyst. Uh, you know that uh, projects could have business analysts or system analysts or anyone else who is responsible for uh, keeping updated the re project requirements. Sometimes uh, engineers also work as business analysts or do business analysis uh, not even understand the need. Um, I have to tell that uh, it is not an obligatory role and mostly um, business analysts identify and define solutions that will maximize the uh, delivered value to the project. We have to uh, figure out business needs of different companies, for example, or future probable solutions. It's important to attract funds and investments uh, we usually um, are working on uh, several um, fields like, for example, market analysis, technical feasibility study, study of data. We are uh, working with uh, hardware, understanding what uh, the product should consist of and so on. Also, we can recommend software and platforms um, for future solutions and uh, uh, list requirements uh, um, about security level and so on. The next, uh, the first floor. Okay, we have an idea and we have to understand our condition. We have to think of uh, our future target audience and uh, there are different tools, how to do it, how to analyze customer expectations. Um, usually uh, different analysts um, use such techniques at SWOT analysis when we um, figure out future uh, project uh, strengths and weaknesses, uh, try to find um, opportunities and also to um, find all possible risks and threats of our product. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to analyze probable competitors uh, and, uh, for example, to compare um, existing solutions to create a spreadsheet when we uh, enter the information of uh, the current cost of uh, core features of the product. Uh, it's important to understand uh, what should we bring new to the market uh, and um, you know, what features our product should have uh, to find our target audience, uh, to analyze uh, market trends, uh, but for more comprehensive and for deeper market analysis. It's a good idea to hire a market specialist. They have also different tools and uh, they can do this work uh, better. Okay. Uh, when we have a good idea, when we identify business needs, uh, we have to start our work and uh, the good idea to do it not just uh, from um, and for example, uh, coding here, yeah, but 
uh, it's a good idea to start the project from the discovery. It also could be called like a technical feasibility study. Uh, during this phase, it's important for business uh, analysts to elicit different kind of requirements uh, about the software network, about security data. Um, usually we split all of these requirements into two groups, functional and non-functional requirements. Uh, the functional requirements answer on the question um, what product uh, do and how uh, and the non-functional requirements answer on the question how it works. Um, uh, during the discovery phase uh, we also can figure out for example the probable cost of future solution of the device, what price could we offer um, to our possible clients and uh, even to understand uh, whether we need to develop this product or have to stop the development on this phase, uh, not to spend uh, money and time for useless uh, device, for example, or for useless solution. Um, usually we uh, could decompose all the tasks in, into, um, during this phase into, uh, and uh, to figure out, for example, what epics stories and um, subtasks uh, the future work will have to estimate this task, to understand how much time it uh, will take and uh, it um, is uh, information for um, marketing departments and for um, our investors, for example, to um, know um, how it is difficult uh, to develop the product and uh, how much time it will take, uh, how much money it, um, necessary, it's necessary to spend on this idea, and so on. Okay, when we finished the discovery phase, um, or during the discovery phase, so we uh, pay much attention to um, the data. You know the data is a uh, significant part of work for all of uh, IoT uh, projects because uh, sometimes um, the data that sensors uh, collect um, become the core feature of uh, our solution and uh, it's important uh, also to think of um, the tools that we should use for um, the collecting of this data. Uh, the data life cycle in IoT projects sometimes it could be very complicated because uh, data um, exists on all of levels from hardware uh, in application and um, services and uh, we have to answer on questions for example how we um, process this data should we use different amplifiers um, filters on the hardware level, uh, then how do we transmit this data to our uh, applications if we use these applications. Uh, sometimes uh, we have different databases on all of this uh, level, in the firmware level, in uh, uh, software and in clouds, and uh, we have to estimate all of these connections. Um, it's good a practice to prepare special diagrams like entity relationship diagram when we figure out uh, for example all of these depend uh, dependencies um, and characteristics of uh, variables um, so uh, okay um, when we have a um, good list of uh, requirements uh, we know all our Mm, probable uh, features, uh, we also uh, think about our hardware level. Um, uh, during this uh, part of work, uh, usually uh, mechanical designers um, and uh, different uh, engineers, uh, PCB engineers also take active part in our work and uh, we have business uh, analysts, we have to 
supply them with all these requirements. Um, they have to know all the features that we uh, develop uh, and to decide um, what approach we use because uh, on the hardware level it's crucial to solve, for example, some basic issues. Um, you know that, for example, um, power supply, uh, power management uh, takes um, uh, could be quite difficult, and we have to decide, for example, and to know whether we have the access to electricity grid, or we have to use rechargeable replace replaceable batteries, uh, or something else, for example, solar power, and. Um, Usually we create a list of questions, something like a questionnaires, and to and discuss and during our workshops, the, uh, in the meetings with our uh, customers, and that's on all these questions. It's important uh, to uh, to keep in mind all of this information during the hardware design. Uh, sometimes quite easy questions from the first glance uh, could cause um, um, difficult, for example, discussions, uh, such questions like whether we need to enable a button in our solution or, or not. It's a simple question, but uh, this small uh, element could uh, solve many issues, for example, in the future. And also it's important to prioritize, especially in the discovery phase, for example, what features we should do firstly what should be included in our MVP product, what can we add to the second iteration or remove from the first um, prototype. Um, also, usually we describe how the data will be visualized, whether we need to enable um, displays in our device or we use um, external um, tools to uh, visualize this data, we use uh, applications and so on. Uh, it's important to pay much attention to enclosure design. Uh, usually it's a good practice to attract a specialist, the designers who uh, prepare different sketches, for example, five or seven um, sketches of prototypes and uh, to offer these um, uh, solution for customer or just to uh, choose the appropriate one between us in team of developers and so on. Okay, uh, let's continue. When we understand how our device looks like, what enclosure we use, uh, what materials we use, uh, what components um, will be included in our device, uh, business analyst could also offer different software and um, other services that could be used for our solution. Uh, firstly, we have to decide uh, whether we need, for example, mobile application, what operational system will be used um, in our solution, uh, Android or iOS. It's quite a simple question so, uh, from the first glance, but also, market analysis could help us to answer on this question and to understand what is the target audience, what uh, applications um, they use, what devices they use to run our solution. Um, sometimes it's better to know, for example, how much the future services will be cost and uh, analyze uh, different tariff policies to know uh, what is the price of future project or product maintenance. Uh, it's also a good idea to create a competitive uh, comparative table and uh, spreadsheet in, in this spreadsheet uh, to figure out to uh, write all, for example, advantages and disadvantages of uh, different services that, that we are going to enable in our solution. Um, let's talk about security. Um, you know that uh, sometimes uh, we think that um, 
our devices or IoT solutions uh, have uh, many uh, weak zones and uh, the data could be stolen and uh, we have to understand, for example, do we uh, need different uh, security protocols to encrypt our data? How should we store this data uh, to understand the policy of uh, data access? What groups uh, will we have uh, to get access to this data? How this um, data and groups uh, will be uh, managed and um, who is responsible for administering this data and so on. Um, and also um, future products could have different other risks, not only um, con um, concerning, for example, um, access to the data, but uh, other business risks and uh, it's a good uh, practice to um, have risk register when all of these risks are estimated uh, have a scale for example from one to five and uh, when uh, we can uh, figure out for example what should we do to mitigate this risk or to remove sometimes after the launch uh, the MVP version uh, for example, we see that we uh, don't have issues with risk A, uh, but we see, for example, a new risk. And uh, it's important to keep this document updated and um, actualize it. Okay. Um, what tools we use for our work? Um, I think that most of you know all of these tools. Uh, ordinary tools uh, that uh, managers use in their practice um, it's important to, uh, to choose the platforms when all these documents because I, I told about uh, documents that uh, business analysts create and uh, how we store this uh, data for example uh, in my practice I, uh, I usually use uh, Confluence or some um, other clouds and drives uh, how we can uh, manage all the tickets and tasks and uh, usually, for example, in Jira we describe the future task. Um, also, uh, knowing the dependencies between task, task, for example, A and B, we, we can uh, um, um, also uh, point it in the, to um, leave a special comments and, and this um, at all. Uh, for better um, business logic description and uh, feature description, we usually use uh, diagrams and uh, these um, diagrams um, visualized in uh, form of different charts, for example, um, uh, UML diagrams or BPMN and different um, uh, collaboration platforms for communicate uh, for different projects we could create or for different uh, teams special uh, channels when uh, we also have a special um, rule how to leave the comments uh, how to share the ideas and so on uh, usually business analyst is responsible for prototyping and uh, you use different tools like Figma uh, or uh, 3D uh, models uh, or application for 3D models and um, for future mobile applications we can uh, just to write screens uh, not beautiful pictures but uh, to understand for example what buttons what menus uh, the screen A will have and so on and this information is uh, important for our um, project estimation to understand the complexity of the work as well and it helps uh, engineers to estimate the work and uh, to understand how much time they uh, have to spend on the, this feature implementation um, um, also uh, I would like to tell you about my experience for example in my project uh, I use different methodology. 
for example, for application development, uh, it's a good idea to work sprints uh, according to Scrum guide. For hardware development, uh, I usually use Kanban. Um, in my practice, um, it's a good uh, idea to create, not for every project, it depends on the complexity, on um, the amount of uh, team members and so on, a different document, the vision and scope. Um, um, sometimes it's uh, just a simple feature list with the description of all of these features. Uh, for more complicated uh, tasks, for more complicated um, features, it's also a good practice to draw uh, diagrams and uh, to use um, and to describe a use case. Um, and uh, also we have to have a plan, uh, something like a roadmap, when uh, we know, for example, what should we do firstly. Um, we develop hardware and uh, uh, then we go to the firmware or we synchronize all of this work. So, for a better uh, process establishment, uh, it's important to um, organize uh, cross Functional collaborations between all of these, all of teams, between hardware engineers, um, software engineers, uh, to schedule their work uh, and to get a feedback. Um, during the project estimation, during the task estimation, it's also quite important to uh, attract all of these engineers to this work, uh, to listen to them, uh, because uh, sometimes they have. Uh, more information and uh, practice and uh, re can recommend, for example, what uh, components we have to enable in our devices and uh, what services we should use according to this, according to their practice and so on. Thank you for your time. Do you have any questions? No. Thank you. Okay, yeah, well. Uh, what would be the difference between business analyst in IoT project and a business analyst in some kind of other project which doesn't involve IoT? So let's mm -hmm. say if you're building a, a social media platform. Okay. You still, I think you still need to go through all of those things. So what would be the difference? Uh, in practice, the difference is that we work close with hardware and uh, sometimes uh, it's important uh, to be ready to elicit requirements for hardware to offer something, for example, for investors or um, those who are responsible for future project development and um, working with um, um, special, for example, IoT services as well uh, becomes a uh, feature, but uh, there is no dedicated discipline. I know that my colleagues from BA community uh, can specialize in different fields, like, for example, in a, uh, fintech or in healthcare domain. Uh, and um, um, a special discipline doesn't. Okay. okay. Uh, in Scrum methodology, how does the cooperation between BA and product owner looks? Because I see some mm -hmm. common uh, task, let's say. Uh, you know that um, according to the Scrum guide, uh, there is no a role of business analyst. There is a role of uh, product owner and engineers. And the business analysts work uh, like a QA, for example, engineers. In team of engineers, um, but in practice, he just help product owner uh, and offer solutions according to his practice, according to previous practice from other projects. There are no conflicts between these two roles. 
what there are no conflicts between these two roles um no 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 <laughs> no conflict Okay, so thank you so much and thank you.